Hey, it's John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope, and I believe I've discovered the perfect travel telescope. This is Learn to Stargaze. They say the best telescope is the one you use the most. For me, that used to be a 12-inch Dotsonian. Gosh, I would take that thing everywhere. At first, on the roof of my wife's old BMW, until I killed that car by letting the scope out the switchbacks at Mount Diablo for the dozen of time. It also fit nicely into the trunk of my Chevy Volt. Then, after a few years, this was my most used scope. Yeah, well, that was for my day job. I mean, night job. In 2008, I added this scope to my wish list with the intention of using it to film live lunar videos to promote my new book, 50 Things to See on the Moon, which was swiftly picked up by Celestron and packaged with their beginner telescopes. If you don't have a copy already, amateur astronomers love it, just saying. And Celestron is not in any way sponsoring this video, I'd just like to point that out. So my in-laws ended up picking up this scope on sale for about $129. I didn't realize at the time that this would be the scope that I'd use more than all of my other telescopes combined. Should this be your first scope? Heck no. Finding targets with this telescope may be frustrating. If you're new to astronomy, get a small Dubsonian or an F6 refractor like the Celestron 100AZ or the Explore Scientific First Light 102. Should this be your second telescope? Probably not. You'll probably have aperture fever after your first telescope and end up with something larger, like a larger Dobsonian or a C8 or C9.5 or something bigger. Should this be your third telescope? Absolutely. So what's in the box really that's useful? Just the scope and this bag. You'll need your own mount. It also is sold primarily as a spotting scope for terrestrial viewing, so it would traditionally go on a camera mount or something like that. And so the finder scope is like upside down. It's on the bottom of my scope on all my mounts. I know you can't flip it around and make it go on top. It doesn't work. You'll also want to pay the 20 bucks for a 90 degree diagonal because while the 45 degree diagonal is for terrestrial viewing and using it for astronomy is quite literally a pain in the neck. It also comes with this chintzy little finder scope, which is actually really good. I actually like this. It's, when you use it, it's, it's decent. Anyway, instead of the finder scope though, I mounted a Rigel Quick Finder onto the telescope, which I love. So here's the Rigel Quick Finder. If you haven't seen one of these before, it puts a really cool, uh, there it is, little bullseye on the sky, and it makes it ridiculously easy to find stuff. The telescope only comes with a 32 millimeter eyepiece, which is pretty wide. I don't think I've ever used it, so I really won't comment. Uh, for this, I primarily use my Celestron Zoom eyepiece, which goes from a focal length of 24 millimeters all the way down to 8 millimeters. So that gives you about 150 times magnification with this telescope, which is quite a lot, especially for a telescope this small. I find this eyepiece a dream, especially for looking at the moon. So you can look at the moon you know, as a whole moon, or you can really zoom in to get a good look at some of those craters and other moon features. Okay, let's talk mounts. So you might be tempted to put this telescope on a panhandle mount, like the Explore Scientific Twilight Nano here. The challenge here is that the Nano lacks slow motion controls. At high magnification, you really want those slow motion controls, otherwise it makes finding and keeping your target quite a bit more difficult. Now I've actually had this telescope on the Twilight mount itself, and now that does have the slow motion controls, you know, and everything you need to have a great experience with this telescope. The difficulty here is that this mount is not small, it's huge. So then you're effectively defeating the purpose of having a travel telescope at all. I paired it with this uh, Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, and that really pushes this scope into the awesomeness category. Both the scope and the mount, not the tripod, fit inside this carrying bag. And it makes it great. So I've had this telescope in Virginia, Hawaii, the Cayman Islands, Toronto, all around Atlantic Canada in this backpack. And I love that I can carry it on a plane. This backpack fits in my normal size backpack and I can put in a computer and another camera and, and even my guidebooks and everything I need to do astronomy fits in my backpack. And then I just carry the tripod on the side. It's been wonderful. I even used this as a solar scope once in Toronto. It was great. Yeah, and while I was in Toronto, David Levy saw me using it and he was amazed. We talked about the scope for a good hour and that's when he signed it and named it. He liked it that much. I mean, that's insane. A power telescope with a go-to mount carried onto a plane. Fantastic. 
And then when I was in the Cayman Islands, that's when I used it to film the occultation of Mars by the moon during the day. I went to an event in St. John, New Brunswick that, that was put on by astronomy by the bay. And uh, I pointed at the Sombrero Galaxy, which was hovering over the city of St. John, you know, a city of about 100,000 people. And I swear, it looked like this. And so I went and checked out the Sombrero Galaxy and some of the other scopes. And you know what? Even the bigger scopes, it didn't look a whole lot better. And these were some, you know, dots, eight inch dots, 10 inch dots. People from all over the event, most of whom were using Dobsonians, uh, started to come over and see what the big deal was about. And the fact that they could see the Sombrero Galaxy in the clarity that they could uh, just really blew them away and they were really impressed. So if this telescope wasn't impressive enough already, I wanna show you my latest project. What I've done here is I've set the telescope up in the garage and I've added a Star Adventurer wedge and a Star Adventurer counterweight to the Skywatcher AC GTI mount. That turns the mount into an equatorial mount, which means we can take astrophotos with this telescope. I've also added a 50 millimeter star field guide cam and a ZWO ASI 120 guide camera. Um, as a designated astronomy camera, I've added a ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro color camera to the system. What ties it all together is an ASI Air, which allows me to control the whole thing from my iPad. So I got to test this last week at my parents' house in Prince Edward Island. We had Bortle four skies and I got great results like this and this and this. And now these are just preview shots. They haven't even had the darks and biases and flats added to them. And you'll notice there's not even any star trails at all. I tested the guiding up to three minutes and it worked great. I ended up taking one photo of M16, which I used a 15 minute exposure. It was still a little bit noisy, which means I need to add maybe 45 minutes or so more of, of, uh, of light frames. But I was surprised just how easy it was to, to use and how well it just worked effectively right out of the box. As soon as I put it together, it didn't need a whole lot to get it going. The most challenging part of the whole setup was getting the counterweight to thread into the mount. So the counterweight uses an M8 thread and the mount receives an M12 thread. Uh, let's just say it was quite a lot of work to get this going, but you can order a part that makes it work. So in summary, if you're looking for the ultimate versatile travel everyday telescope, check out the C90 or Mighty Mac or Galaxy Gun or whatever we're calling it these days. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. It's a new channel and I can use the support. And to all of you, stay healthy and clear skies. Mm -hmm.